boom, Mike Rhodes is now three for three on player commits. Ace Baldwin Jr., Nick Kern, Kanye Clary. The roster is starting to take form here, and Penn State men's basketball is setting up nicely for next season. You are Locked On Nittany Lions, your daily podcast on the Penn State Nittany Lions, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Nittany Lions your first listen and watch every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and your go-to podcast for PennState.Rivals.com, your go-to source for everything Penn State Athletics. My name is Zach Seiko, your host, and I am joined again by the man himself, Pat Korbler of Black Shoe Diaries, SB Nation. Pat, uh, with the recent basketball news, it it was a quick turnaround. I thought it'd be a little later, but I I, I was hoping it wasn't going to be too later. I'm glad you're back. Hey, like we said on the the last podcast, right? Um, lots of happenings in Penn State basketball, and of course, we saw that come to a head this uh, these last couple of days. So, thanks for having me back on, and yeah, exciting time for Penn State basketball, just like we said. Yeah, and I, I want to give a shout out to your work as well over at Black Shoe Diaries because I I, I went through you know you. You can go to your link, your profile, uh, and see you're writing two to three articles almost every single day. So uh, put it into perspective for us. Where can people keep up with your work? Yeah, go to blackshoediaries.com. Um, like Zach said, I'm and grinding right now as you know, basketball has lots of news and lots of things to write and exciting things to write. So blackshoediaries.com, you can see what I'm writing. And then also you can follow me for those that are on Twitter or those that are on YouTube. You can see my, my handle down there at the bottom, but it's at Horbler, P-O-E-R-B-L-E-R. So you can follow me on Twitter as well. All right, perfect. Okay, so Kanye Clary's back in the fold, and then Nick Kern, a teammate of Ace Baldwin Juniors, is following him to from VCU to Penn State. I, when I had a tough choice saying, like, okay, well, Kern happened first, so maybe we should talk about him, but Kanye Clary feels like the more wholesome uh, re-edition because everyone, mostly everyone, we still haven't, I guess, had confirmation from Demetrius Lilly as far as what he's doing, but Kanye Clary to get him back in the fold. And this was one I never was really too concerned about just because he didn't enter the transfer portal. There really weren't any other rumors, but now he's put out an official statement on his social media that he's coming back. There's lots of work to be done. Mike Rhodes was hyping it up as well, Coach Rhodes. Uh, and, and now it's official, and I just can't help but wonder the potential of this backcourt because I th- I think you're going to have both of them on the court at the same time. Yeah, you'll alternate who's going to bring the ball up and who's going to be handling the one, but I – it feels really good, especially in this age of basketball, college basketball, especially you need an elite backcourt. And I think Penn state is at least closer to that sentiment now with Clary back in the fold. Yeah. I think you hit the nail on the head there. Um, People look, people can sometimes think of basketball in like the old sense of, right. You have a point guard who, who brings the ball up and does most of the ball handling your shooting guard is supposed to be your best shooter. Your small forward supposed to be your, you know, best defender and maybe hit a couple shots, but Right, that's not really necessarily basketball anymore. The more guys that you have that can handle the ball, that can score on their own, that can create for others, the better. So it remains to be seen what Clary's role on this team is going to be, right? Whether he's starting alongside Ace Baldwin, whether he's the backup, whether he's playing sometimes, whether he's playing um, a lot with Ace, we're not really sure yet. But if you're Mike Rhodes or you're a Penn State basketball fan, you want to have as many of those types of guys, right, creators, that you can. And and I think in the small sample size that we saw of, of Kanye last year, right. He only played 10 minutes a game and, you know, towards the end of the season, maybe it's getting a little bit more time, but we haven't really seen his, his whole package yet. And certainly we're only seeing the tip of the iceberg with what Kanye can be. We talked about in our last episode of a guy who could has the making some, someone who can get his shot off. Um, at all different points of the court, right? As a three-point shooter in the mid-range, um, getting to the rim, it's just a matter of taking that next step for him. So, like you said, uh, we kind of expected this Kanye to come back. There wasn't necessarily any smoke about him potentially leaving, but it's good to see that they get Ace in. He's going to be the point guard, and that Kanye, you know, didn't take that as a slight. That he didn't think, oh, I'm the starting point guard now. Um, so, yeah, great to get Kanye back, and, and he's an exciting prospect to have. So so definitely good for Mike Rhodes and company. Well, and just what impressed me down the stretch was that 
you know, this was a loaded backcourt with Micah Shrewsbury a year ago uh, in, in 2022 and the end of the tail beginning of the 2023 year. And Kanye Clary progressively increased his minutes. You know, at the beginning of the season, I said, OK, you know, Clary's probably one of those guys because I was surprised Jamil Brown didn't see any minutes. And it turned out to be Kanye Clary just because they're different types of players. Clary being more of that traditional, your number one, your point guard, your ball handler. Whereas Jamil Brown is a, you know, your your typical two, your shooting guard, your all around scorer. And, and Clary can create on his own. And by doing so, that's going to open up other opportunities because Clary, from the second he steps on the court, He's just the fastest guy, period. Fastest guy for Penn State and fastest guy that any opponent's going to match up with. And I want to compare him to Jamari Wheeler, not in the sense of, well, Jamari Wheeler was a lockdown speedster. He really wasn't that great of a scorer uh, when defensively absolutely lights out. But it was that speed. It was that quickness. It was that agility, that ability to cut uh, in a quick second and, and be able to maneuver that way. Like that's – you you can't game plan for Kanye Clary. So I hope that he's going to take that next step too, because it felt like he was a little out of control at times, but I feel like if he can hone that in, he could be a serious scoring option come next season. Definitely. And when we talked about which of the Penn state freshmen, we wanted to, to, to come back and play for Mike Rhodes, system you even said last podcast that you would pick Clary. And the reason for that is again, that speed, right? Mike Rhodes wants to play at a quicker pace. Definitely quicker than than Shrewsbury played and you know the idea of of Kanye whether it's with the ball in his hands or without the ball in his hands playing in a system that's going to get up and down the floor a little bit more that's gener- that's going to generate some turnovers more um and utilizes his speed a little bit more and, and more than just the half court sense is something that definitely has to be exciting for for uh for Penn State fans now Pat do you think this will have any impact on his fellow because I thought you know just this isn't Mike Rhodes's player. This this shows that the message that Coach Rhodes and the staff have really resonated with Kanye Clary. I know it's going to be different for anybody else, whether that's Kev Ajay, uh, Jamil Brown, as we said. You know, you pointed out that he's very connected at, with Coach Adam Fisher, who's now at Temple. That could be a real like I I kind of see that happening. If I could crystal, I don't I don't have a position to crystal ball, but I, I think I could with Jamil Brown to Temple there. But besides the point, you know, Clary's not from Pennsylvania. Uh, and, and this was a Micah Shrewsbury commit. So with that being said, does this kind of now set a precedent that Mike Rhodes can really connect with some of these players, you know, that have great re- relationships with that past staff, but Rhodes is able to push back past that and, and is able to connect with them one-on-one in this new age of Penn State basketball. So do you expect that, you know, we'll see Lily back in the fold? We could see potentially a, at least a better chance of a Keba Jai, a better chance of a Jamil Brown, a better chance of an Evan Mahaffey all coming and returning to Happy Valley. Yeah, certainly so. Um, I think just like with any person, right, you take these players and they are people and they're going to have their own decisions to make. And despite the fact that they are, what, 19, 20 years old, Mm -hmm. um, they're also pretty mature guys. So I think I think they're not just going to simply, you know, see that their friend and I assume Kanye is their friend. Right. I don't think they're just going to simply see that Kanye is their friend. He's staying at Penn State. Oh, I'm going to do that, too. They're going to do and they should do what's best for them as basketball players. Right. Keba came to Penn State, and, and uh, I don't remember the quote, who had the quote exactly, but he said he came to Penn State for Micah Shrewsbury because he thought that Micah could get him to the NBA. Th- that doesn't necessarily mean that he doesn't think that could be the case with Mike Rhodes as well, but right, the, these guys chose Penn State in large yeah. part to, to Micah Shrewsbury. Of course, things can change over time. right? You went to Penn State, I went to Penn State. We know yeah. just how awesome that place is. And if you would have told freshman Pat that he needed to transfer somewhere else, I don't know if he would have been able to. So perhaps that's the case for these for these guys as well. Um, so definitely a good sign to get Kanye back. right? It's not a bad thing at all. And, and, and just like we talked about with, with Ace, getting a VCU, getting that first VCU guy in is going to kind of start the, the snowball effect with the other guys, whether it's good or bad. And I think we'll see that with Kanye as well, right? He's the first one that come out and and put a rubber, span, rubber stamp on it and said, I'm coming back to Penn State. So I'm sure we'll he'll some, hear something from uh, Demetrius Lilly. And then, yeah, those those other guys are in the portal, uh, Brown, Mahaffey, and Keba. What they do 
you know, I'm not necessarily going to speculate on that because it really is just for me, mostly a show in the dark for, for what they'll do. But Kanye coming back, definitely not a bad sign for, for Rhodes and what he's been able to accomplish, you know, so far here in what the first week or two that he's been on campus. It is Locked on Nittany Lions. That is Pat Korbler of Black Shoe Diaries, SB Nation. And we're talking Penn State basketball is just boom. Uh, Mike Rhodes is really starting to build this program up uh, now. I, I, in a sense, three for three. He hasn't he hasn't missed out on anybody that they've been actively recruiting. Of course, we're going to talk about Dalian Johnson uh, and, and some other players that are just going to be moving around in and out of Penn State. Uh, and the second VCU guy, let's talk about him in the second segment. But first, let's hear from our sponsor of today's episode, and that is Built. Are you looking for a delicious snack, but you don't want all of the sugar and calories, and you need to try? the best tasting protein bar ever that is a built and if you're like me where you want to make healthier snack choices but you don't want to compromise on taste i've got just the thing for you that is built bars and built puffs built bars are healthy and they taste amazing seriously they taste so amazing you won't think that they're good for you you've got to try them and what makes built bars so good well for starters they're covered in 100 percent real dark chocolate that is right real chocolate and they come in unbelievably tasty flavors like churro peanut butter brownie and cookies and cream i'm not sure how built does it i'm really not but these bars taste like a candy bar while maintaining amazing macros and what's even better is that they are healthy for you just 100 30 calories, four grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of pro protein. And now you don't got to wait around to get a box for years. We've been talking about ordering built bars at built.com, which you still can do, but now you can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's club and you can get your specialty flavors still at built.com. So that's right. Head to your nearest Walmart today, walk to the pharmacy section, grab yourself a box of Built Bars. You can pick up a four-bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate bar, or coconut puff. And if you're at a Sam, near a Sam's Club run in, grab a 13-bar box with hit flavors like brownie batter puff or churro puff. You can thank me later. And thanks so much for making Locked on Nittany Lions your first listen and watch every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and just Coming up over the course of uh, the you know the next few days, the week, uh, there's going to be a lot of. I think there's going to be more men's basketball news, and that's why we have Pat on in this case. And but there's also going to be the blue and white game to talk about. So plenty of football and basketball news, even though it is the off season. Uh, so I'm amped up over here, Pat. Uh, Nick Kern now transferring in from VCU. So he's that second Rams player to come in. Uh, it was it was late Wednesday, Wednesday, April 12th, that he made the announcement and then Kanye Clary Thursday, April 13th. Uh, so back to back, Mike Rhodes is it has hit on Ace Baldwin, Nick Kern, and now Kanye Clary. So three for three. I hope he doesn't miss at any point in time, but I, I think eventually he will. And I, I don't really count a Dalian Johnson for an example or Caleb Dorsey. Uh, as misses just because I don't know that they were players. They they might have looked at them and said, you know, we're not necessarily targeting you uh, anymore. Or Dalian Johnson and Caleb Dorsey. It felt like they already had their minds made up that they were going to leave Penn State. So let, let's save that for the last segment about just some other players that could be involved or what our thoughts are there. But Nick Kern, what kind of player is Penn State getting uh, in Nick Kern? How does he complement Ace Baldwin? How does he just complement the team in general? And where would you rate him in terms of, you know, maybe ranking VCU's players uh, one, you know, the top five where he might rank from this past season? Yeah, so Nick Kern, 6'6", 190 wing, um, probably the most athletic player on, on the VCU team, which, like I said on last podcast, is really impressive because that's something that Mike Rhodes really – uh, puts at a premium when he's recruiting players. He wants long, lanky, and athletic guys. So it's a team full of athletes, and if he's the best one, it's it's really saying something. Uh, just it, just for myself, I was trying to think of like previous Penn Staters that had his level of, of athleticism, and it, it, it's really been a while. He's an explosive leaper, super quick feet, um, super quick hands, like a coordinated athlete as well. His claim to fame, his calling card is going to be defense. He can guard one through we'll say one through three, just because in the big 10, right. You can get some, sometimes he'll play like a bigger four. So at six, six, one nineties, he might be a little bit too light to cover a lot of fours, but uh, he's going to be a defensive stopper, really, really good defender. And even if you watch VCU games, ace Baldwin obviously got a lot of the, the pub. He won a 10 defensive player of the year, but a lot of the times Nick Kern was taking the best guard on the opposite team. And right. That kind of makes sense just because of the, the burden that, 
Ace Baldwin was going to be carrying offensively yeah. as well. Um, Nick was was kind of being one of the leaders of that defense. He started out the season as just being a rotation guy, being a bench player, and then ended up moving into the starting lineup as the season went along. When he was in the starting lineup, he was averaging 21 minutes a night, which was up from his season average of 17 minutes a night. And points per game jumped uh, almost two full points. Uh, as a starter, he averaged 7.2 points a game and then 3.3 rebounds a game. So although that, that doesn't sound all that impressive, and, and that certainly is the case because Kern does have quite a bit to work on offensively, uh, he's a kid that knew his role and did it really, really incredibly well. He shot over 60% from the field. Um, certainly as a starter, I want to say even, even throughout the entire season. So this was not a kid that that was forcing up shots or was trying to, to make himself more of a focal point of the offense than he should have been. He knew his role. He did it well. And for Mike Rhodes, as he's trying to build his program, those are the types of players that, that, that you want. Um, offensively, like we're saying, he has a lot to work on. Mm-hmm. Everything is going to the rim at this point. He only took eight threes last season. He hit two of them. Uh, I don't believe he hit any as a freshman, and he took like seven or eight as a freshman. So still a lot to go as a shooter because in the Big Ten and in the power conferences, uh, being a defensive stopper only gets you so far, right? So last year he averaged between 15 to 21 minutes a game. If he wants to kind of take that next step as a player, that shot's going to have to come along offensively. So he is only a sophomore. He'll uh, He'll be a junior next season, so he'll have two more years. So this is, again, not a case of a guy that's going to be one and done and out of here. That progression is still going to continue. But you would like to see the shot come along just a little bit more because if he's a player that that you can keep out there offensively and he's playing 30 minutes a night, he's going to be an absolute terror on the defensive end, uh, generate turnovers, and and get you easy points um, in the fast break. Now, the, the thing that instantly comes to mind for me, and and knowing that, yes, Kern is more of a defensive-minded player, but this sounds like... You know, if you had replaced Evan Mahaffey's name in there, it sounds exactly the same. So is this kind of the, I guess, the resolution that if Evan Mahaffey doesn't come back, that's what, you know, the Kern and Mahaffey fit in these similar types of molds. Sure, they're different players and there's some quirks about their game and stuff. Uh, but just at the base of it, I would say that they're almost exactly identical. Similar players for sure. I would say that Mahaffey probably is more of a, more of a forward wing. I know, like we were talking about in the beginning, like this idea of like positionless basketball nowadays, you don't really necessarily just have someone who's a point guard versus a shooting mm-hmm. guard versus a small forward. So I always like to put it in guard, wing, forward, and then bigs. I would say Mahaffey's probably more of a forward wing, whereas Kern is more of a wing guard, if okay. that makes any sense. I know that's yeah. kind of splitting hairs. Um, just a little bit on the smaller side and and again more of like that wing guard type but no so and similar players and that's kind of the idea with trying to keep Mahaffey around that hey you would make a lot of sense for Mike Rhodes's Mike Rhodes's system I don't want to call it VCU system anymore because it's not VCU system it's Mm -hmm. Penn State system now so uh would make a lot of sense for Mike Rhodes's system so there's definitely similarities that they have uh Mahaffey's just probably a a little bit bigger I wouldn't necessarily say that he's like a replacement for Mahaffey. I mean, if Mahaffey does go, Curran can do a lot of things that Mahaffey was doing. But I think that Rhodes wants to have as many of these types of guys as possible. And and, and certainly in Mahaffey's case, uh, he needs to come along offensively as well. But he was just a freshman, so I'm sure that will come too. Right. And Micah Shrewsbury, like I said, at the, at the base of it, they're very similar, but you know, Mahaffey was used as a five yeah. in some cases made those season saving rebounds. I wouldn't exactly expect not saying that Kern can't, but that, oh, that was just a little more of Mahaffey's. It was the defensive also cleaning up the glass. I feel like Kern is the type of guy to meet someone maybe more at half court and sure. just shadow him all the way around, whereas Mahaffey can switch and do so, just kind of be that, uh, I would say, more of an all-around defender, whereas Kern's like, okay, you lock him down, you know, like the, you have the, the 2K traits or whatever, and I feel like that's kind of more up Kern's alley. Yeah, it's interesting. Just I just even now just looked up their size and weights, and like I said, Kern is listed 6'6", 190. Uh, Evan Mahaffey's listed 6'6", 200, and maybe that's the case. I feel like Mahaffey carries, seems like he carries a lot more weight and just seems taller mm-hmm. in general. Like you said, he played a lot of five. Now, granted, it certainly was small ball five. I mean, we saw 
lineups where Miles Dredd or Seth Lundy were the five last year too. Um, but Mahaffey just, I would be surprised at that 6'6", 200. Maybe the 200 is real. Mahaffey just seems a little bit bulkier as well. Kern, Kern is yeah. built almost like a, I don't want to say an NFL wide receiver or a college wide receiver, but he has he's more of a slim build than Mahaffey does. And I know that yeah. Mahaffey isn't exactly thick either, but Mahaffey definitely has more forward skills than, than Kern does. Kern's going to be one up more of your one to three guy guarding you know guards and wings, whereas like we saw with with Mahaffey last year, can definitely do some wings, but we'll kind of stick with those longer forwards as well. Let's move to the final segment here, Pat. Uh, and we've seen Dalian Johnson commit to Florida Gulf Coast, the coach that originally recruited him and then, of course, resigned because of the circumstances. And and now he's reuniting down in Florida with Pat Chambers. I, I think that's a good fit. Caleb Dorsey, I don't know the William and Mary connection. That's just I'm glad that I think he wants to be a focal point, And that's a good place to be, especially because he started. He was a starter in the first few games and then just completely disappeared. I just, I, I wish them both well, but I, I don't consider those as, as casualties, as losses necessarily, because I think their minds were made up that, hey, it's time to move on from Penn State. Uh, there really wasn't any saving grace here for at least those two individuals. So now let's kind of keep looking towards uh, any updates from the transfer portal? I mean, we <laughs> we talked not too long ago, what? It was uh, 48 hours or so, maybe 72 max, uh, and, and we're kind of getting some some more news as far as who's going to come in. Uh, so what have you gathered about Penn State's next player commit that, that could be in the fold for Mike Rhodes and company? Yeah, so I don't even remember when we talked last if it was public knowledge that Jalen Deloach was going to be officially visiting, but he is coming to Penn State this weekend. He canceled the Indiana visit that he was supposed to go on. Um, might be rescheduling that, but is coming to Penn State this weekend. I saw that Ace Baldwin's little brother is also, because he's a junior at St. Francis Academy down in Baltimore, he's also visiting this weekend. So I can only assume that Ace Baldwin will be <laughs> will be with his brother at Penn State. And my guess is that Nick Kern will be coming up too. So you'll have Ace Baldwin, you'll have Nick Kern, you'll obviously have Kanye Clary, um, Demetrius Lilly, and maybe the other Penn State guys as well. We'll be on campus this weekend and and pushing Jalen to make the call for for Penn State too. So we'll see if that comes to fruition. That would obviously be a really big get for Mike Rhodes to get you know somebody that six nine and super athletic and can play the five. Yeah. So we'll we'll see what happens with with Jalen. Um, the only other real major update as far as Penn State goes is that Zach Hicks, um, Temple current Temple player. He trimmed his list. He, he officially visited Penn State last weekend. He trimmed his list to four schools, Georgetown, Penn State, UTEP, and then returning to Temple. So we'll see where he goes next. Um, I'm not sure if he has any other visits scheduled. I believe he's already visited Georgetown. I think he still might have to visit UTEP, but just for my own personal opinion, I have a tough time thinking that UTEP is going to end up being the choice. So we'll see if he sticks at Temple with Adam Fisher, if he decides to come to Penn State, or if he goes to Georgetown with their new regime there. And once again, Hicks, 6'7", um, I think 185 pounds, but can really shoot the three. Um, yeah. Takes like six or seven a game, hits him at a super high clip, really nice stroke even from the free throw line. So kind of has some upside as a shooter as well. So certainly would be a welcomed addition for a team that could definitely use use some shooting. Other than those two guys, I don't think there's really too much too much else out there um, that that Penn State's after. Obviously that the the transfer portal is always really fluid and and things pick up quickly. So uh, yeah, just check out blackshoediaries.com the next couple of days in case anything breaks. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and anything could change with uh, Jamil Brown, Kebajai, Evan Mahaffey. You know, those are I mean, those are the Penn State fans' top targets, but definitely would welcome in what who is a stranger now in Zach Hicks. But like, especially with a guy like Andrew Funk, who has to move on because he doesn't have any eligibility left. You know, that was that was so cru he was so crucial to why Penn State was able to get where it is. And and a season ago, when it was John Hara and everybody else, they and and Miles Dread wasn't as effective as an, a shooter as you would like to have, or at least. He picked it up towards the end of this past season, but they didn't have that guy who could just really make anything. And, and so if that seems to be Zach Hicks. That will be the uh, be nice addition for Mike Rhodes's crew. 
Certainly. And just now that I, I just took a look over my list, uh, two other VCU guys, Jameer Watkins and Jaden Nunn, doesn't, at least on the surface, appear that Penn State's going to be all too involved with them. Jameer Watkins went down to visit Arkansas. He's one of the 1,200 prospects that Eric Musselman has been in contact with and apparently mm-hmm. has now visited Arkansas as well. So, uh, so far, no Penn State buzz on that. And Jaden Nunn, I believe was visiting or is going to visit Baylor. So it looks like those two are kind of looking outside uh, Penn state and, and, and sticky with Mike Rhodes. So maybe something comes up down the line. Neither of those guys have committed to any programs yet, but if none's looking at Baylor and Watkins is looking at Arkansas, um, I don't know if the pit, the, the fit will necessarily be there with Penn state, but we will uh, keep you updated on that. Oh, good old Walmart recruiting. That's uh, the NL, the NIL <laughs> slush fund NIL. sponsored by uh, Walmart, you know, great value in Walmart. Uh, Pat, it's always awesome to get your perspective. Uh, Blue and White is Saturday, April 15th. So hopefully people can tune into uh, this before uh, that all said and done. But just, for, just real quickly, what are you looking? Because you also cover football as well. What are you looking for out of the Blue and White game? Drew, it's all about Drew. Um, I emotionally need him to be the quarterback that I think he can be. And I mean, I, like, I don't even care if it's just going to be like a flash in the pan on Saturday. If he goes out there and he goes like nine for nine with two touchdowns, we can start the Heisman campaign. Yeah. At this point, that's really all I want. Just give me hope. I need hope. I can't have him go out there and, and throw interceptions or look bad just because for the next four or five months. I, I, I don't need that for myself emotionally. So that's what I'm excited for. What are you, what are you excited for outside of Drew? Cause that was, I definitely took the cop bad answer on that. Yeah. I mean, tailgating, just seeing the, the whole atmosphere. I'm kind of setting the over under for fans at 80,000, uh, you know, Texas, yeah. Texas is sitting down South and we had 40,000 fans show up for our spring game. Uh, that's nice. That's, that's cute. Isn't it? Uh, I I'm, I'm anticipating 80,000 plus. I, I know that they like to maybe fudge the numbers a little bit, but I really do genuinely think just because of the weather and it's supposed group, to be good, right? I, I yes, haven't really 75 been- sunny. I saw earlier in the week that there might've been thunderstorms coming later. Maybe it's later <sighs> in the day. <sighs> hopefully, yeah, been- hopefully not. I haven't checked though recently just because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be there. So it not my worry. But um yeah, I mean even if not, tomorrow night for people that are coming in or tonight, depending upon when you put this podcast out. Friday night, yeah. I know it's supposed to be beautiful in State College, so they really couldn't have asked for for better better uh, weather. And even if you get a thunderstorm, it's still seventy five degrees for most of the day. So I think yeah. Penn State fans uh will take that for tailgating for sure. Yeah, I don't think anyone's going to pass it up just because there is, you know, a, a small threat of a little rain, right? Um, even if it is a passing thunderstorm. And just it, it's that it is the Drew Aller, but more importantly, it's the potential of Penn State is in the top five. And some places they're third. And now, the I think the AP top 25, because they don't like Penn State, uh, they're probably going to put them at maybe six or seven and say, well, it's Drew Aller. He's unproven, yada, yada, yada. But I mean, some beat writers who know their stuff have put Penn State at three uh, in their uh, way too early preseason ranking. So there's just a lot of a lot of potential here. And that's why I think the crowd's going to be uh, pretty, pretty outstanding uh, when it comes to Saturday, April 15th. So, Pat, I appreciate that as well. Again, uh, where can people keep up with your work uh, and everything that you do We're right now with the intensive of men's basketball, but also your football coverage, too? Yeah, blackshoediaries.com. That's blackshoediaries.com. And then you can follow me on Twitter at Porbler, P-O-E-R-B-L-E-R. And Zach, just once again, thank you for for having me on. Looking forward to, to joining whenever I can again.